Hey, this is Ralph. In this video, I want to create a button so that a user can easily switch the web page over to a dark mode. And we're going to use a set attribute method and so that we can just swap out the CSS file being used. So a little bit of prep I did before turning on the recorder is I do have a page set up. It's just a dummy page with a bunch of filler text, a few headlines. I do have a picture on there. Um, I have a button that's going to be my, uh, my trigger and that button has an ID. And I also have a reference to an external CSS file. That CSS file also has an ID. So in addition to making this little dummy practice page, I've also got my light mode CSS file, which has the light background and the dark foreground. And I've also got my dark mode CSS file, which has the dark background and the light foreground. So really all we need our script to do is to be able to swap out one CSS file for another CSS file. And that's gonna be pretty easy with the set attribute method because we can look at this particular link tag, we can find the hyper reference attribute, and then we can change it out to our dark mode CSS. So let's get to work. I'm going to put this down in the lower part of my page, right there at the bottom of the body. It's nice having everything kind of self-contained when you're creating demo files or practice files. And let's see how I'm gonna write this. I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. Uh, document .get element by ID. I want to reference my button. Now my button in question is my DM button. That's the ID. So DM button dot add event listener. Now when a user clicks on that button, what do I want to have happen? Comma. Well, this is normally where I would call a function. Now if my function exists, I just put in my function name, but my function doesn't exist. So I'm just going to write the word function, empty set of parentheses, then an opening curly and set of curly braces. And I'll press my enter key a few times to get a little room to work. And I like to put a semicolon right there too, even though that's not too critical. So basically, when somebody clicks this button, I'm going to invoke a function. The function doesn't have a name, it's anonymous. When I click the button, I'm going to do a series of things. So first thing I will do is I'm going to declare a couple variables. Constant variable, let's go ahead and do CSS equals document.get element by ID. This is my CSS file. This is the link tag that refers to my CSS file. Const um, DMB for dark mode button equals document.get element by ID. And that is, I think, DM button spelled out. I think that's all correct. Let me just double check. Yep, ID CSS file, ID DM button. Looks good enough. Cool, cool, cool. All right, now, at this stage of the game, we haven't done uh, if statements, logical statements in our class yet, but this one's not too bad. It's pretty easy, actually. So I'm gonna just put it right down here, if. If something is true, then I'm gonna do that. So if, whatever's in the curly braces is true, then I'm gonna do what is inside of, I'm sorry, if what is in the parentheses is true, then I will do what is inside of the curly braces. Else, another set of curly braces, else I'll do that other thing. So if something is true, I'll do this. Otherwise, I'll do that. So what I'm gonna look for to see if it's true, my page is starting off and I've got dark mode there as my button text. So I'm gonna use that as my trigger. It's actually kind of nice if we declared a variable, we could have dark mode enabled on or something like that. But I've got that text right there, so I'm just gonna use that. It's good enough for us, I think. And it also fits with what our topic is we've been working on in, in, um, in week three, uh, talking about DOM methods, and of course, enter HTML comes up along with set attribute. So we'll use enter HTML. We have some enter HTML text. So basically, if my DMB dot enter HTML is equal to, notice I'm using two equal signs, is equal to dark mode. Well, if that's a true statement, if it's true that my enter HTML is dark mode, that must mean that dark mode is not applied. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my CSS file dot set attribute. Now the set attribute, I'm gonna look for a couple properties here. The first is the href property, that's what I wanna look for. And the next is gonna be the value of that property, style slash dark mode dot CSS. Yeah, so those are the things, I'm. that's what I'm gonna do. However, I also wanna change up my button. I don't want my button to stay, say, dark mode anymore. So I'm gonna change my button, my DMB dot enter HTML 
is now going to be equal to, one equal sign is going to be equal to light mode. There we go. So if my button, oops, I meant to do a semicolon right there. So if my button reads dark mode, then I will click it, and then that's going to change it out to dark mode. That actually might be enough to test, even though I don't have anything in the else. Let's see what happens if I go to my page. I do a hard refresh here. Click on dark mode. Cool. That looks like it's doing. Notice my button text changes out to light mode. Of course, I can't click it and do anything yet. So um, it's back over here else. And actually, I'm just going to copy this. Oops. And paste. And of course, I'm going to change this out to light mode. And then, of course, my button text, my inner HTML, is going to change back to dark mode. Let's do a quick test, and then we'll come recap what we've got. And I like to do a hard refresh there. Dark mode, cool. Grayscale image, text changes, light mode. We're back in business. Excellent. So, declaring a couple variables for some key components on my page. If my button text is dark mode, then clicking that button is going to set the, uh, the CSS file to my dark mode version, and it's going to change the button text to the opposite, light mode. Otherwise, it must be light mode, which means it's going to set that CSS file to light mode and change the inner text, uh, the inner HTML to dark mode. So it's just a binary operation. This is not the most efficient way of writing this, but it does practice a couple of those key uh, JavaScript methods that I want you to be aware of. Thanks for hanging out with me.